management was telling the nation the virus was no worse than the seasonal flu to date. It has claimed the lives of 190,000 Americans. North America correspondent Catherine Dis joins us now from Washington. Catherine, good day. So what did these recordings reveal? Good morning, Joe. Look, today we've uh, seen five excerpts from 18 interviews that Bob Woodward has done with the US president. They were on a range of different topics from race relations to diplomacy with North Korea. But what's really gained much attention here today has been the interviews that Bob Woodward conducted with the US president during the coronavirus pandemic. And parts of those or excerpts from those interviews reveal uh, that the president was well aware of the dangers that the coronavirus posed as early as February 7. In that tape, uh, he says it's far more deadly than the flu, in fact, five times as deadly. Uh, that was in an interview that Woodward did uh, 10 days after the president was briefed by intelligence officials where he was warned in late January that the world faced the worst health crisis since the 1918 flu pandemic. But at the same time, publicly, uh, the president was telling the nation that it was uh, no worse than the seasonal flu, that uh, it would soon disappear and that the US government had it well under control. Let's take a listen to some of what he had to say. You just breathe the air. That's how it's uh, passed. And so that's a very tricky one. That's a very delicate one. Uh, it's also more deadly than your you know, your, even your strenuous flus. And Catherine, what's the reaction been? Well, look, we've heard um, from Kayleigh McInerney today. She is the White House Press Secretary. Uh, she was quizzed on this for about 30 minutes today by reporters where she repeatedly defended how President Trump had handled the crisis, uh, saying that he didn't want to spark any fear or concern. Uh, we've also heard from the US President today. He was out announcing some more judicial announcements or appointees rather, uh, but of course he could not avoid questions on this subject. He he has also defended his response, saying that he did not want to spark any fear or drive the country into frenzy and didn't want to incite panic. He has labelled the book as a political hit job. Let's take a listen. I don't want people to be frightened. I don't want to create panic, as you say. And uh, certainly, I'm not going to uh, drive uh, this country or the world into a frenzy. And we also heard, Joe, from the uh, Democratic nominee for President Joe Biden, who was out campaigning in Michigan today. And he certainly hasn't held back on how he feels about those uh, tapes that have just been re released. Let's take a listen. On the day that we hit 190,000 dead in the United States because of COVID-19, we just learned from the Washington Post columnist Bob Woodward that the President of the United States has admitted on tape in February he knew about COVID-19 that had passed through the air. He knew how deadly it was. It was much more deadly than the flu. He knew and purposely played it down. And that was Joe Biden there, Joe, just uh, saying what the president knew about the virus and the dangers that it posed, and also referring there to a subsequent interview that he did with Bob Woodward on March 19, where he admitted that he downplayed the threat of the virus because he did not want to spread fear. OK, Catherine Dis reporting there from Washington. High winds are fanning dozens of catastrophic fires across three US states. The blazes have trapped firefighters and civilians behind fire lines in Oregon and levelled a small town in eastern Washington. Hundreds of homes have been destroyed. The governor of Oregon says the area is facing a statewide fire emergency. Over the last 24 hours, Oregon has experienced unprecedented fire with significant damage and devastating consequences across the entire state. I want to be upfront in saying that we expect to see a great deal of loss, both in structures and in human lives. This could be the greatest loss of human lives and property due to wildfire in our state's history. Early reports indicate that the towns of Detroit and Central Oregon Blue River and Vida in Lane County, and Phoenix and Talent in Southern Oregon are substantially destroyed. Hundreds of homes have been lost, 
and we continue to carry out mass evacuations across the entire state. Fortunately, numerous Oregonians have been rescued from harm's way, including even pulling people from safety in the rivers. Uh, now, I just want to assure our viewers that our reporter Michael Rennie is OK. We were having a chat to him uh, in the last five or ten minutes or so and he wasn't able to continue. Uh, yeah, we're a bit concerned about him, uh, but he is OK. And, uh, yeah, we look, look forward to having a chat to him again soon. Now, more than 12,000 migrants have been left homeless on the Greek island of Lesbos after a fire gutted their overcrowded camp. Officials suspect the blaze was deliberately lit in protest against a coronavirus lockdown. The camp was placed under quarantine last week after an asylum seeker tested positive for COVID-19. Japan's Coast Guard has scaled back the search for...